Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, New Mutants, issue number seven. All right, I <laughs> I barely know what to think about this. This was a great book, but when you throw something that could possibly be serious in a very silly book, I don't know what to do with it. But I think that's part of the genius that is Mr. Hickman. Let's get talking about who made this comic book. We'll delve into the book more itself. Jonathan Hickman is the writer. Rod Reese is on art. VCs Travis Lanham doing the letters. Tom Mueller doing the design. Rod Reese doing the cover. Man, Reese is all over this. Nick Russell doing the production and the head of X. Well, it's Jonathan Hickman for crying out loud. This issue is called Spoilers. I'm surprised it's not called Deathbird because that's part of the game that's involved. Oh, that's right. Pull out your D6. Uh, two of them. Possibly two D6 because there's a game in here. Don't actually play the game. It's stupid. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> just read the instructions. I was like getting ready to reach my, my dice. I was like, wait a second. This whole book is silly. Let me read this. I'm like, yeah, no, this, um, this is not meant to be real. <laughs> you, you can't actually play this game. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. The rules don't make sense. Anyway, um, Roberto da Costa, Sunspot Extraordinaire. He's really the, the G master of this book. A whole bunch of really cool things happen up in here. But he is really the main drive of this book. I, that's just what it all comes down to. He's given the recaps of what happens. He winds up going to the full-on spoiler territory because he forgets that issue number six of the New Mutants was actually the, um, oh, for crying out loud, I know his name, Ghost Rider, Writer, Extraordinaire, ah, Ed Brisson. There we go, Ed Brisson. Uh, Brisson's also, you know, there's two different writers on the New Mutants book and he's messing around and... Hickman's a great man. He's just like, oh, you want to write something different than me? Okay, not a problem. Let's see what we can do. And he just makes DaCosta go crazy in this one. He's actually breaking the fourth wall. And at one point, I'm like, you know, technically, he instead of him breaking the fourth wall and going full Deadpool on somebody, you know what? Or She-Hulk, really. She did it first. Well, she did it before Deadpool, at least. It's like, you know what? When push comes to shove, maybe he's not going Bugs Bunny. Maybe he's actually just talking directly to... Um, a monitor where he's he's recording his thoughts and whatnot, you know, like they did in the movie Avatar, right? Not the last airbender one, the, the Pandora one. Anyway, no, because they actually start talking about issue numbers. Moonstar comes over and she's up there and she's a part of the fourth wall breaking thing. So she is not herself breaking the fourth wall until she actually looks. But before that, she, I'm just like, dude, this book is so freaking crazy. And I can't help but to say I loved it. I really did whole bunch of really cool things happen in this book. you got to read the book in order to understand what's going on. If you have any further questions, hey, not a problem. We're going to do a live spoiler talk. Uh, I'm about to get to something very important in a hot moment. But I do want to say we are going to have a live spoiler talk where I might actually need to ask you guys some questions. Because I'm really curious about this next part. That live spoiler talk should be at either 11 p.m. on Wednesday night, possibly midnight, so an hour later. So it'd be Wednesday night slash Thursday morning, midnight. Uh, all of it is Eastern Standard Time, so New York, Toronto time. Uh, be there live, interactive. You guys can, you know, send chats and things like that. And this way, you know, we can actually have ourselves a decent conversation. Hopefully everybody's read the book by then, and then we good. You know what I'm saying? We good. One of the questions I need to ask about is what do you guys think? The thing at the end with Cyclops, was that real? What I mean by that is, obviously it's a plant, but I mean, do you think that he's messing with somebody? Do you think that he's being strategic? Because this is Scott, you know what I'm saying? Like this is, imagine Captain America doing something. Pretty much anything that he does is for the sake of furthering his goals, his plans, his agenda, trying to make the world a better place. Scott is a little more personal. He's trying to benefit mutant kind specifically. And having a play, I'm not, no spoilers, but putting a plant where he's apparently about to get a gateway plant is pretty impressive. So I'm genuinely looking forward to see if this actually goes someplace. Hickman's the type of guy that he could plant something in plain sight and you don't think that there's anything special about it, right? And in a book where everything's funny, this one thing seems like a funny thing, right? Or just at least a cute thing. Or, okay, cool, you made, you know, um, um, Gladiator smile. Ah, ha, ha. Uh, uh, uh. I have a feeling this is something more than that. And this is going to come into play at some point later. Probably in this book. And 
I can't wait to see what that is. Guys, like I said, live spoiler chats Wednesday night going into Thursday morning. I will hopefully see you all then because this was very interesting. A whole bunch of questions. Looking for some answers. Maybe we can do that together. All right, I'm out of here, guys. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.